Look at this sexy hair. I got some sexy hair. Let's do this. Vámonos, muchachos. You got this. So I don't know, I don't know what the hell happened to my driver. <laughs> some people just ghost on me, maybe because maybe because I I I uh I demand a lot. <laughs> some people just ghost me out there like later. You're too much for me. I'll see you. <laughs> Goodbye, Kenny. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> So you would just ghost me out. I have no idea why they do. My driver is gone. I have to go find myself another driver. I got to find myself another driver. Down, 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 down. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully, um, hopefully well. I don't know. I'm gonna have to fight someone. Uh, but yeah, yeah, they, they. They, they ghost me. They're like, goodbye, Kenny. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye, guys. <laughs> Kenny. <laughs> goodbye, butters. Goodbye. Goodbye, butters. <laughs> Anyways, guys, my name is Jose Trujillo. <coughs> Man, I don't want to die in the car studio. I'm the world's greatest living artist. I wanted to talk to you about commitment what it means to be committed. I want to talk to you about commitment today, what it means to be committed as an artist. Uh, <clears throat> look, if, if I, I've been getting kind of like split things, like like dual messages. Some people are like, dude, stop talking about being a, 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 <clears throat> a full-time artist. That's not my gig. I want just to learn how to paint. For those of you, I got some cool stuff packed. I'm getting ready to launch a, uh, a, uh, it's called Trujillo Art Academy. <laughs> it, it's, uh, it's going to be courses to, to, to paint and draw and all that kind of stuff. But then the other people that, you know, watch my stuff on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook or whatever, they're like, dude, I love what you're, I love the way you're talking. I love what you're saying. I too want to be a full-time artist so I will talk to you guys that are like dude I want to I want to monetize I want I want to create income what what can I do so the very first thing that I I realized was do you got to commit you got to commit you know you got to commit so that you don't quit commit so that you don't quit commit so that you don't quit you got to commit you got to put your <laughs> you got to put your commitment really high it's got to be really high up you got to be too legit to quit why because if your commitment's not high any any little thing is going to shake you any little thing uh the weather yeah as simple as the weather oh man it rained today i can't go paint outside i'm a plein air painter but ooh boo hoo it rained today i can't do it oh well so i won't do it you gotta commit. You gotta figure out a way. I mean, shit. Don't figure out a way. Just do it. Even if, even if it's, even if it looks wrong. Even if it doesn't look like the right thing to do. Just, just go all in. Go in like a, like a, I don't know, like a bandolier, bandolero. <laughs> go in all the way. You know, because what happens is that you're going to, you're going to start figuring out ways to show up. You have to start figuring out ways to show up, and and it's going to give you creativity. See, this is something that I learned from a mentor. In order to get creativity, you have to commit first. If you commit, then your creativity will follow. So many of us want creativity first. Like so many of us are scratching our heads. I know because I still do it, you know, but I know I don't do it as much as I used to. And that's why I'm like legit like that, right? But uh, but I know there's a lot of artists who still do that a lot. Scratching your heads being like, man, what can I do to to make some income from my artwork? And you're like scratching your head, you're scratching your head. Man, what should I do? I gotta be honest with you guys. No matter what you do, no matter what you think about, it's going to require a lot of work. I know there's some people out there that are like, 
<laughs> I know there's some people out there that are thinking, that are thinking, oh man, if I just, if I just do it, um, if I just figure out a very intelligent, savvy, super awesome, quote, killer way of doing it, it's going to happen for me, you know? If I just, like, some sort of ninja strategy. I wish that would be the case. Now, there are some stuff, there are some things that, that, that can, you know, they're called, like, people call them different things. I just call them leverage boards or leverage points. Right? Like you can leverage yourself, but it doesn't matter. That the, the strategy won't matter if you if if you're not willing to commit, if you're not willing to put in the time. So, do systems and strategies work? Absolutely, absolutely, they do. But I would put my emphasis more on the commitment than on the, than on the strategy. So many people have a lot of information, and this is I think this is why they don't pull the trigger. There's so much information. We're information saturated. You know, you're like, man, I'm gonna listen to Gary Vee. Uh, you know, and you know, you listen to whatever the fuck Gary Vee is saying, and you're like, oh, okay, cool, yeah. And then, and it, but but the problem is that you don't go implement, right? That's the problem. You don't go implement. I know because it, I know, I know because it happened to me. <laughs> and so you don't go implement. And then you're like, oh, I'm gonna listen to this Jose dude who's like super good looking. I'm gonna go listen to him. And then you listen to what I'm saying, and I'm like, dude, commit, go do this, go do that. Because I'm always like, I'm always like throwing out cool pieces of uh, content that are like actionable, you know? Like, do it. Not, don't think about it, do it. And then you listen to me, and you're like, oh, okay, cool. But if you don't take action, like, like pronto, pronto action, uh, then you're going to be like, Oh man, hold on. I'm not. I'm confused. I'm not really. Oh, uh, maybe maybe if I listen to another video. And this is what happens. This is what happens over and over. Then you go to YouTube and you're like, oh, let's see what um, I don't know this other artist is talking about. See, this artist just said something different than Jose said. Man, you know, I knew it. I knew it. You know, they don't all have. They don't got it right. And you know, and I did this kind of stuff. I did this game. I played this game too long, where I was like, "Oh, Gary V, you're the man. I'll listen to you." Uh, and then I and I heard another guy talking about, you know, something similar, and I'd be like, "Oh, I'm gonna go listen to you." And then I would put on uh, Tony Robbins, and I'd be like, "Oh, I'll listen to that." And then I'll put on some uh, some uh, spiritual guru, right? Some. Uh, uh, by the way, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with any of them. The the, the, the problem is that. Is that you're getting conflicting messages. For example, if you put on a spiritual guru, uh, whatever, right? Any spiritual guru, uh, think of anyone, I don't know. Uh, who do we think about? Uh, I think Gary Zukav. Zuk Zukav is one of them. He's a great one. I, I love his, his book, The Seed of the Soul. Uh, uh, Edgar Toll, The Power of Now, A New Earth. Awesome stuff. Osho, Osho's a little, Osho's a little Osho, but but he's a nevertheless, he's a wise man. So it's, I listen to Osho. Uh, but you get conflicting stuff, you know, because it's not that the, it's not that what they're saying is wrong. Is that if what you need to do is get off your ass and and implement a strategy and go balls to the wall with it. Maybe listening to someone say, sit there, stay still, don't move, rest, you know, you know, introspect is going to be a conflicting idea. I'm not, I'm not saying neither one of those ideas are wrong, but you have to search in yourself. Hi, Jolly. You have to search in yourself. How's it going, Laura? What am I supposed to do right now? If you're tired, rest. If you're anxious, rest the mind. If you... If you are, I don't know, if you're broke, work harder, work more, work longer. If you uh, have some income coming in, but you want to, I don't know, you want to take things to the next level, keep working harder, keep working longer, but learn some strategies, right? This may mean you buy a book. This may mean you you find a mentor. This may mean you pay someone to, to, to teach you something. This is, this, is, this is how it is, right? Most of us... 
it's the way it is. You go, you go to someone, you're like, dude, how do I get training for this? I mean, I, I know people that will, will pay for training. I, I, I know people. Hey, that was me. <laughs> I paid for training for like stupid, silly stuff. Like, how do you paint shadows? You know, how do you paint shadows in a painting? And then, you know, this, this, this artist would be like, well, I got my DVD right here. And, uh, and uh, I do classes, and the class is going to be $300, you know, and whatever, right? And I'm going to teach you how to paint shadows. Nothing wrong with that, by the way. I, yeah, I want to get into that game. That game sounds like legit. Nothing wrong with that. The problem is that most of us will pay for stuff like that, but we won't, we won't pay for getting close to someone who is monetizing or or... Or someone who's like, dude, I know how to do Facebook ads. This happened to me for a while. I wanted to do Facebook ads. I wanted to do Facebook ads. And then, uh, and every time I wanted to learn how to do Facebook ads, I was like, oh man. But the course, the course, I was looking at a course. Uh, it was a thousand bucks, right? A thousand, something like $1,200 or something like that for the course. And I was like, oh man, I don't know if I want to dish out $1,200 uh, for a course and learning how to, you know? And then, uh, and then there's this company that was charging me five, five, five thousand bucks to do it for me, right? Uh, for for a period of time, and that they would they would generate the traffic for me, and they were gonna do it for me, and I was like, oh man, I don't know if I should do that, uh, and on and on and on, you know. And uh, until one day, I spent way too much on my own <laughs> learning how to do it trial and error, right? I was I was like. Dah, dah, dah. Let's see Facebook ads, trial and error. I still do trial and error, you know? But one day I was like, what the hell am I doing? This is stupid. Dude, you got the money to go pay it. Go pay someone either to teach you or or to do it for you. But it's probably better to pay someone to teach me. So that way I can, I can put someone to work in my studio and then they can do it for me. And then that person gets another skill. Right, that person helps themselves too. Not only am I paying them, but they also learn a new skill that I'm going to teach them. And I just thought about it. I was like, dude, it's stupid. Like, go learn how to do it. Go spend the money and learn how to do it. You need it. You need to learn how to do Facebook ads because I'm not. I'm not like the best at Facebook ads. I just point and shoot. Like, I. I don't even think I point. I'm like an old cowboy. <laughs> I shoot from the hip. <laughs> but it works for me, you know, it still works. Cuz uh I got one one thing on my mind and on my mind I got one thing. <laughs> it's attention. Attention is the name of the game. So, I learned this early on and uh and 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 I realized that it doesn't really matter in the beginning. It doesn't it never really matters. But it's good to know a little bit more. That way you can squeeze the lemon out of it, you know? And that's what learning about Facebook ads would help me. And the people that are doing, like, very, very sophisticated stuff on Shopify and all of that, to those guys, it really matters. Especially to, like, affiliate marketers and people that do that kind of stuff. Man, to those people that are doing that, it really matters. Because that's, the whole strategy is that. They spend thousands of dollars a day just on, on Facebook ads. I know because I know a couple of, I know a couple of bastards who are just milking the cow every day. I love that, but that's not what I do. See, I'm a, I'm a painter, and I'm like, oh man, like that's not my strategy. It's not just Facebook ads. My strategy is everything under the sun. <laughs> so, so anyways, why did I start telling you about all of this? It's because there, you need to find you need to find that that place, right? where you start committing you 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 need to find out that mental space where you commit you got to commit first solo show today so anxious lol Alyssa I love that solo show for Alyssa Alyssa Penner underscore artist you rock I love that I love it when people are winning I love it you know, because it's going to, it's going to pump you up. It's going to pump you up. You're going to make some sales. You're going to, mm, it's going to, mm, it's going to pump you up. It's going to make you feel good. Solo shows are awesome. I love solo shows. 
Oh, 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 one, one little thing, one little thing for, for solo shows. I just remember right now about solo shows. Uh, this is a little bit of unsolicited advice, Alyssa, okay? One little thing for solo shows. Stay close to the person who's going to swipe the credit card. If it's not you, stay close to that person. Talk to that person before, before doing the show, before their reception. And tell that person, make sure that you tell that person, you and I are going to be one. Because if that person runs off on you, like, if that person goes and talks to someone else, and then someone comes to you and talks to you, and then they're like, man, I want to buy this painting. I really love this painting. Oh, my God, I want to purchase it. And the person with a credit card swiper, or the person with the, that has the power of the, of the register, runs away from you. For whatever reason, because they're not really salespeople. Many, many of them, most of them are not really salespeople. They, they, they have no idea what they're doing. Uh, you're going to lose the sale. So make sure that you're close to that person. And may the gods favor you. May the odds be ever in your favor. And sell a lot of paintings tonight. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing that used to happen to me. You know, I used to have a show, and then the person with a, with a swiper power uh, used to run away. Because they're afraid of the sale. You know, they're like, oh my God, it's just, you know, I don't like it. I don't like the confrontation of of taking someone's credit card. <laughs> so, so I have to be like, nope, you're staying close to me. You and I, you and I are staying close. Because, uh, because people are, are, when people are, when people, oh man, the first two hours, you got to be like a lion. Like a lion for the first two hours of that opening reception. Be like a lion. Stay away from friends and family. <laughs> I feel like a dad sending someone off to school. Stay away from friends and family. They are energy suckers. I'm sorry. Save it for later. Drink a little wine later after the show ends or, or when the show is going to end. or Better after the show ends. Uh, and, and only talk to the people that are looking at your paintings with high interest. You'll see, because they'll look at the painting and then they'll smile and look around. What they're actually doing is they're, they're, it's a peacock, right? What they're actually doing is, I'm over here, come sell me something. <laughs> Absolutely, Lisa. <laughs> I'm over here, come sell me something. <laughs> That's awesome. So see, man, Lisa is a winner. Love that. I need an art show. I need an art show pronto too. It just reminded me that I need an art show. So yeah, guys. Yeah, stay committed. You know, stay committed. Uh, it's uh, commitments. Everything. Commitments. It's it's is uh, it's the it's the soul. It's the engine. It's the engine of, of of the whole thing. Commitment is the cojones. Commitments. Everything. You commit. I remember when I was a kid, my mom used to tell me, uh, she used to tell me, don't ever feel less than any other man in the world, okay? Don't ever feel less than any other man. The most valuable men, well, she meant men and women, huh? The most valuable men is the most committed one, okay? The most valuable men is the most committed. Don't ever feel less. There, it's not your education. It, it is not your skill set. Those things matter, of course. Remember her, I remember her stressing to me before she passed. She used to tell me, "Look, the most committed." Uh, well, my, my mom my mom passed away from 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 cancer, and and so she had time to to kind of like uh, um, send me on my way to life with, with. I was an adult man by then. But with a lot of knowledge, I think she, she put together, uh, not that she put together, but, but she realized that she had time to, to, um, to pass on, I think, her, her, her precious knowledge. I think, she, I, I, I think she, she, had, she had, like, very deep wisdom. I know that. She, she was an avid reader and very spiritual person. And I think she had a lot of wisdom. A lot of wisdom to, to pass. So I remember her telling me, look, never feel less than anyone else. The man who is the most valuable in the room is, is, will always be the most committed. Make sure you're the most committed. The most committed. To whatever cost. Whatever your cost is. Be the most committed. Commit high, higher than everyone else. 
and that will make that will ensure that you will you will get your value you know you will receive your value from the gods not from people you will receive your value from the gods it's a higher value it's a higher end type of value you're the most committed that means you're the most you're the most you're the, you're most resource resourceful you're the person with most value that's why einstein said i think i think einstein said uh i think he's the one who said don't don't don't, don't strive to become successful strive i think he said strive to become uh, a person of value i think he said that i'm not sure don't quote me on it though because i'm i'm not uh i'm not a uh i'm not the best one at re-quoting quotes I, I give loose translations and loose quotes. <laughs> But yeah, you know, it's a commitment. Commitment will, will determine everything. And commitment is one of those things also that it's not... I don't think it's, it's, one, it's a one-time event. It's not like... It, we, we tend to think things of things as, as movies. Like one day the person committed and then after that all you see is the montage and then they kick ass, you know? Uh, especially the 80s movies. Yeah, like, you know, Rocky and whatnot. Uh, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't happen like that, guys. I don't think so. Not, not in my story. My story uh, has been different. My story is that I wake up every day and I'm like, fuck, man. I got to do this again? And then I have to remind myself, yep, you got to commit to it. Commit. And then even multiple times a day, not just once a day, like multiple times a day, I got to redirect myself, redirect myself, redirect myself constantly. Because I, I want to take off, you know, I want to take off into La La Land, mind fucks and whatnot. I'm like, oh, yeah, um, I'm going to go, uh, I don't know, play with my phone, you know. And I was like, oh, no, no, no. What's your commitment, dude? What's your commitment? Is your commitment your phone? No. Okay. Drop it. Go do it. Go do what you have to do. This is me talking to myself. <laughs> so, so it's a constant commitment. You know, it's a constant commitment. It's a constant, uh, I wouldn't call it a struggle. Sometimes it feels like that, but it's a constant challenge. It is a challenge. And it wasn't, a, I wish it was a one time, I wish I had like, like that strength that you see people in movies, like the, the heroes, where they wake up one day and they're like, I'm going to change the world. And all they do after that is kind of like, it's work, but it seems easy because they just, because they committed already. And, you know, uh, I think commitments like showers, you know, or like food, not like showers, because showers you can, you can get away with like a shower a week if you're a cowboy. <laughs> but, uh. But uh, if you, uh, a lot of people shower every day. I, I shower every day. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, you shower every day. It's like you commit every day, no? But I think it's more like food. You have to eat like, like three times a day. And if you're like me, you eat three times a day and maybe like a couple of snacks extra. <laughs> Or maybe a little bit more than that. But, uh, but you know, it's, it's constant. It's constant watering that garden. So it's not, it's not like, a, like, oh man, today I committed, yeah. For the rest of the, you know, the, the, remi the remainder, uh, the remaining 16 hours, I'm going to be top notch, on point. My, my shit's not that tight, okay? I'm not that tight. Like, I'll commit right now, and then 30 minutes later, I'll be fucking around. And I'll be like, oh man, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> That's me. I don't know, maybe maybe you guys are different. Maybe you guys are like, more macho, but not me. I have to constantly commit, constantly, constantly get back to, to, to like, I, I get out of the rail, you know. Like, up, uh, up, uh, I have to constantly remind myself. And it's a, it's a daily thing. Like, one of the very first things that I do, as soon as I wake up, because I know my little ass, I know that I'm going to, like, like you know, start gearing off, gearing away. Uh, in little things, I'm not talking about, like, oh, today I'm going to go binge drink. Oh, no, like, those days are gone. As Celine Dion said. Uh, Celine Dion. Uh, it's not like that. It's like, it's like I'll take a little too long on something. I'll, uh, I'll become a bit more perfectionist on something. Like if I'm working on something, I'll be like, well, maybe if I, if I edit it, maybe if I edit it more, maybe if I change the background, maybe if I, that, see, so now I'm committing to perfectionism. You see what I'm talking about? It's higher end shit. It's higher end. I promise you. 
Uh, so it's not like, oh man, I'm not committed today because I went binge drinking and I smoke, I don't know, you know, some fun stuff. Uh, no, like, I, I don't do that, you know? So, so it's not like this is the kind of stuff that bothers me and, and, and takes me away from my commitment. The, the kind of stuff that takes me away from my commitment is like little stupid things like, like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer back someone back an email, right? Taking too long taking like 30 minutes like oh my god what am i gonna say what am i gonna say what am i gonna say oh oh or procrastinating on something oh man i gotta paint which reminds me i have like three commissions that i'm procrastinating on i'm sorry if you're listening to this if i owe you a commission uh and uh and and i'll procrastinate i'll be like oh my god not procrastinating as 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 i'm going to go binge watch something on netflix and not paint i don't procrastinate like that thank god not anymore uh my procrastination looks different. It looks more like, oh, I ran out of time because I was working on this and then I was working on that and then I had to email some people and then I had to blah, blah, blah and I, I ran out of time, you know? Uh, so my procrastination is like, it's sneakier now. It's, it, it appears to be intelligent. But I know procrastination. Procrastination is not... Uh, it's perfectionism. That's all it is. It's just perfectionism. It's mechanics. It's like, oh man, I didn't exercise today because, you know, because this and that and that, you know, and I'm like, oh man, I got to get into the gym. Come on, dude. Wake up, you know, 30 minutes earlier or, you know, go to sleep 30 minutes later or whatever. But, but that's, that's how procrastination shows up in me. So, so my thing is, is am I committing to procrastination? See, like, I, I don't let anybody else hold me accountable. I hate that. You know, if my wife is like, dude, you forgot to, oh, it's like, it's like someone took a dagger and just, you know, just got me just right in my heart or in my back. That's how I feel. Not because I don't like it, but because I don't, I don't like someone else holding me accountable. I hate that. Uh, I, I chose this career, you know, not, not, not someone else. I, I'm the one who's like, dude, I'm going to be an artist. I'm going to make this work. So. So I don't, I don't appreciate, not from someone else, I don't appreciate my, from myself to slack. I don't know if I make any sense. Like if my wife reminds me, I get happy that she's more committed than me, but I get upset that I didn't have the balls to be more committed for myself. You guys know what I mean? I think, I hope I'm making my point across, getting my punker, my point across. So, so I, I, you know, I, 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 it's, it's, it's that thing that I'm always striving for. Like, commit, dude, commit. And I found out that every time I commit, uh, by the way, commitment doesn't mean figuring things out, okay? It doesn't mean, oh, I'm going to go figure things out. No, that's not commitment. That's procrastination. And that's perfectionism. That, that's not commitment. Commitments, I'm going to make this work. I have no idea how. But I'm going to kick its ass. Commitment's like, sort of like David and Goliath. Those of you who are Bible readers. It's sort of like that, you know. It's like, little guy comes there and it's like, oh, big bad Goliath. Symbolizing the world, right? I will kick its butt. I don't know how, but I will. That's commitment. Commitment's uh as an artist, this is, I mean, I'm not trying to act like a dad here. You got to commit, kids. No, I'm just, just expressing how I feel about being an artist and why I think commitment's the most important thing. Not skill level, not inspiration, not creativity. All of that is secondary. And if I knew what the other word would be, it would be something like tritary or something. I don't know what the other word would be. <laughs> but it would be under it. Neat. Commitment's senior to everything else. No commitment nothing else you know so uh i th- i mean i think that's why sports were really you know certain certain sports at least certain sports in life were created as a reminder of men against the world you know where you commit you rise you know the the, the, the violent the violent uh uh sport of bullfighting you know that that the world is now becoming aware and getting rid of uh, thankfully for, for the poor animals. Uh, it's just a different awareness, no? It's a different human awareness. You know? we're, we're at a different place now. But that, that sport 
I, we can even call it that now. And I think it was created for that. You know, as a reminder. Man against the world. The bull, the big bad bull, you know. Big bad wolf. Big bad bull is the world. And it's challenges. And if you're not careful and you're not skilled enough and you're not committed enough, it will kick your ass. And I think that that's what, you know, it's a reminder. Every time the the bullfighter uh, evades, you know, the world in 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 an elegant gesture, we're like, ole, right? It's a, it's a, I think it's a gesture of, it's a reminder of, of human beings, you know, uh, being nimble. You have to stay nimble. You have to stay nimble because you don't know where the bull's coming from. You don't know where that kick, that horn is going to come from. You got to stay nimble. You got to keep moving. You got to, you got to, you got to stay alert and use your whole body. You know, you have to move like a boxer does. They, they, they rock themselves, right? They keep rocking themselves because they don't know where the next punch is going to come from. They have no idea where that's coming from. So anyways, I took it way far. <laughs> but but you know this is one of the things that I learned from a mentor look commit first creativity follows uh, Picasso has said it already Picasso said hey I believe in inspiration but it has to find you working it has to find you working it's uh, the perfect example of that no, it's 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 paint first and then and then we'll see right Paint first, and, and I mean, by the way, this is this is something that has been already super uh, tested. I don't know what college or colleges have tested this. I remember reading this uh, a while back, some article. I think it was an article. Uh, it's already been tested that the people that do more, not the people that do best. This is yes in Spanish, in, in, in Mexico. <laughs> See, <laughs> not the people that that, that 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 work on on doing something really nice and on on creating the best quality something are the ones who create more quality. Nope, that's not that's not how it works. Science has proved it. The people that create more have more chances of creating more quality. The most prolific people than the people that work very hard on creating less products with higher quality. It's an interesting thing. Uh, you could be very confused in trying to create comparisons because we could be like, oh, look, uh, it's not true. Uh, I don't know. High-end cars are blah, blah, blah. You're, you're confu you may be confusing market with, with production. It's very easy to confuse that if you're not careful. But if you put more hours into something, you are more likely. That's why that's why when, when Babe Ruth was asked about his home, run, home runs, right? I remember reading this. He was asked about his home runs. He's like, I don't know, I just swing. You know? Uh, I think he said something. Who said that? Was one of the sport guys. One of these athletes. That said, uh, I, I miss every shot I don't take. Or something like that. Because it's about swinging. It's about swinging the bat. You want to swing it. If you're an artist, you want to swing it. Go get a gallery exhibit. Oh man, I don't know if this is the right place or not. Fuck it. Let's swing it. Um, you don't know what to paint. I know a lot of artists don't know what to paint. I'm creating a little resource for you guys. I'm trying to be resourceful. Uh, a little guide or something. Uh, I, I have all these notes that I generated when I was learning this stuff. And I know a lot of artists are like, I don't know what to paint. I don't know how to stay, uh, you know. So, so I'm developing this, this, this tools that, that can help you guys. I don't know. It might help someone, some of you out there. I know this, was, this is one of probably the most challenging things for an artist is what to paint. A lot of artists uh, have this, this challenge. Because if you get committed, uh, you'll come up with it. But there is a point where you are going to feel repetitive. And, and I don't know if you're an artist that feels that. You feel repetitive. And that's when your commitment has to amp up. 
you have to amp up your commitment in order to get that get, get away get out of that hamster wheel I know it's a, it's a big challenge a lot of artists just about every artist has expressed that to me that I've met uh, how do you come up with ideas to paint I don't know I don't know what to paint you know I'll paint a, I'll paint some flowers I'll paint something uh, you know and then I'm like so I I've I've tackled this in just about every direction possible and uh, and I came up with something really cool which is which is what I what I do uh, in my in my daily uh, routine as an artist in my studio so, so but you have to commit though you have to commit without it it's not, I mean I keep repeating this word right it's like okay I got it I gotta commit shut up now I won't I want to keep talking <laughs> but no, in, in all seriousness, guys, man, I haven't even sipped my Starbucks. Mmm. Yeah. Foam's still there. So, it's, a uh, again, creativity also is, is, uh, it's an illusion, okay? Creativity is an illusion, it's not true. It's not, it's not what we think it is. Creativity is, I, I see it as, as the, the, it's a source where everything is. It, it's already there. It's not yours. You just, you have to like get out of your, your shell and remove the, the bullshit, you know, like remove it. And then you tap because it belongs to everyone. It's not yours. It's not mine. Creativity is, is universal, is the untouchable, and it's there. It's there. I know it sounds like woo woo stuff, but it's there, you know? It's always been there. It will be there when you and I are gone, and it will probably be there if you and I believe that we're coming back. <laughs> it's going to be there. It's, it doesn't go anywhere. Creativity is abundant. It's true abundance. It's, uh, it's the same source where Michelangelo came up with, with the David, and, and Da Vinci came up with Mona Lisa and Van Gogh came up with a starry night and on and on it's the same place it's the same place they go and get it from there it's a ever flowing river it does not go anywhere so so you shouldn't be worrying about creativity that that shouldn't be your worry let me tell you if you want to worry about, about something worry about this commit It's like, it's like worrying about the wrong thing, no? It's, it's just like, oh my God. It's like you're going into a, into a building and you're worried about the weather. <laughs> you're going to one of those buildings, you know, I don't know, into a nice space with air conditioning and everything. And you're like, oh my God, I wonder if it's hot outside. And you start th talking about how hot it's outside. It's like, dude, no, you're going into the building. Why are you talking about how hot it's outside or how cold it is? It has nothing to do with the building. Same, same thing about commitment uh, and creativity. People worry about creativity all the time. Everybody's always talking about that. Man, how do I become creative? No, nope, no. Nope. You're worried about the wrong thing. Get committed and watch creativity sniff you. Creativity is going to start finding you. It's like, oh, see, creativity is like a, like a living thing, like a spirit. I know, I know I make it sound all, all spooky and shit, but it's just for dramatic effects, guys. Creativity is like this, this, this spirit. You know, this abundant spirit. It has abundance, by the way. It is abundant. And uh, and where someone is committed, right, it sniffs you out. And it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go. Because it likes that energy. Because it can manifest itself in that energy. <laughs> That's what it does. You know, it's looking for energy so that it can trans. It, 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 can, it can come forward. It wants to exist. Just like a child. Just like you and I came to this world. We came through. Out. Outside. Exist. Out. Exit. That's what creativity wants. Creativity is looking for, for, for who is the busiest bee. And the busiest bee always. Not sometimes. Not maybe. Not mm, Not. No. Always. Always becomes the most creative. So, so you're looking at it the wrong way. If you're thinking about where creativity is going to come from, don't even worry about that. 
that's why I think I think it's in the Bible where it says be bold you know, and mighty forces I think or something like that see I, I butcher all of the quotes and all of the <laughs> all of the good sentences uh, but you have to be bold you guys know that you have to be bold because boldness is commitment we love all the stories of bold people because they are the underdog you no know? the bold person does not have the quality it's not qualified it is more than likely the less qualified person for the job but it is the one with the biggest cojones and that's it resonates with us every time we hear that story we're like dude that's me i get it i am that person you know How's it going, Dan? Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Say hi to the people of Instagram. So it's it's the people that, that are the bold the boldest that that we it resonates. Their stories resonate with us. I mean think of any movie. Forrest Gump, right? Forrest Gump didn't think much of anything. Right, he's he's what we call in in certain stories the simpleton. He is the simple but awakened being. He's a true expression of humanity. Forrest Gump is a spiritual being, a spiritual master. He teaches us the way of the human. The way. Right, the way. It's 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 non egoic. He moves like a bird. Right? He moves like a bird. Ned, are you a There's a... Almost, dude. I may be. So, so we, 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 we find these people in, uh, in stories all the time, right? We find these people in stories all the time. And, and they resonate with us because they are the people that remind us, Oh, man, all I really have to do is be bold. Oh. Like, just commit? Just, yeah, that's it. And then, and then what? I don't know. Just go figure it out. Like who here, like raise your hand guys. Who here was ready to be a father or a mother? If you are one. You know? When, when are you ready? Never. See, so you show up. You show up first. You show up and then you figure it out. You show up and then you figure it out. Who was ready for marriage? Who was ready for a partnership? never ready for a partnership. I don't care how old you are. You're never ready for it. There's no time that you're ready for it. Chances are, the, 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 more, the more time you take, the less ready you feel. I was never ready. This is, this is why a lot of artists go through their, their art careers, 20, 30 years creating artwork, and, and, and consuming a lot of, a lot of knowledge. Consuming a lot of knowledge, reading a lot of books, attending the seminars, and on and on and on. The same BS repetitively, over and over, and never really exiting, right? Never really going outside, existing, right? Exit. Never really, never really uh, coming out of yourself. Because, you, you see, come, come, this is something I learned from another mentor, okay? The same mentor that talked about uh, commitment, creativity follows commitment. Uh, energy is like money. No, now, I'm not in a position to speak about money because I don't, I don't understand it. But this guy does. This guy's got uh, all of that luxury life. And this guy, what I learned from this guy, he said, "Look, energy is like money. When it comes to you." You should not put it away. You should use it. It needs to be used. It cannot get stuck in you. It needs to be used. This is how uh, some of the wealthiest people have gotten wealthy. That's what he talks about. Because when energy comes or, or money comes, they use it. It's like it's like generators. They use it to create more energy. And I found that creativity is the same way. You know, as creativity comes, you don't you don't you don't hold on to it. It's not something that you hold on to. 
it's you're essentially one, one time I had an epiphany <laughs> I want to call it an epiphany uh, I, I picture human beings being sort of like doorways we're not really doors we're not really uh, we're not in or out we're sort of like doorways and in order for this to function you have to stay open like you have to stay in, in, in you have to let the flow if something comes you have to let it go the other way it has to go out it's the only way that it stays open that it stays functioning this is why I know I'm getting to some deep esoteric shit here oh sorry dude uh, but uh, I remember reading that Einstein said in order to keep the balance of life right you have to keep it's like a bike like riding a bicycle in order to keep the balance you have to keep moving you have to keep pedaling and you have to keep the energy going you know and I think Einstein knew a thing or two about energy. He said, "In order, to, I think, I think the quote went something like that: In order to keep uh, balance in life, it's it's, a, it's like riding a bicycle, something like that. You have to keep pedaling in order to keep the balance, right? You have to keep moving forward. You have to keep moving forward, not pedaling, but moving forward, because you can pedal backwards and, and not keep balance. You have to keep moving forward. It's like a fork." One after another, one after another. And uh, when, when, when I started uh, experiencing this in my, in my artistic life, I realized, oh man, like this is, it's never ending. You, you mean I can, I can always be creative? I can always find solutions? Yeah, all you have to do is just spit the old one out. Like keep moving, you know? Let, let the other one... I think all life, all of life functions that way, coming to think of it. Like you receive something, let it go. See, I I I, I wasn't I wasn't understanding this when I when I was uh, when I committed to 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 uh, finding a way to, to sell my artwork, I didn't want to let go of my artwork. This is this is probably what happens a lot to a lot of artists, guys, okay? You need to let the art go. It is it is clogged up energy. You're you're clogging the doorway. You don't know that. You don't. You probably don't realize that yet. If you haven't sold art yet, you're clogging. It's 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 like putting a rock inside a hose. You're clogging. The, you're clogging the, the channel. There's this. This happened to me. I was like, man, I want to make a living with my art. Blah blah blah. But every time someone's like, oh, here, I'll buy it from you. Oh, no, it's $3,000, $5,000. You know, I won't let it go for less. And there's nothing wrong with the price. The problem is that I wasn't ready to be giving those prices because I didn't know how to justify. I didn't know how to talk about myself and how to how to let the person know that, yes, it's worth that. And be okay with it. Not not from a, from a uh, punk place, but from a... An understanding of yeah well this is what I get paid for them you know this is this is what I get paid for this size and this is what I get paid for this size and and on and on and on but what happened to me wasn't that what happened to me was that I kept keeping I, I kept all my paintings and I know a lot of artists do this you paint you keep you paint you keep and then you're like well sometimes I give them away you know but but you won't give them away for for income you'll give them away you're like oh if i'm not gonna sell it for it's really valuable it's really like ten thousand dollars but but if they don't pay me ten thousand dollars i'd rather give it away so like you're you're being all mother mother Teresa and shit you know and and it doesn't it, you're you're clogging the pipeline i don't know if that's you or not i know that was me but uh you may be clogging the pipeline so it wasn't until I realized, oh man, like, this whole thing is about letting go? Yeah, letting go. All right, well, I'm going to let go of all my paintings. That's, that's when I did the whole Craigslist thing. I'm going to let him go. Just let him go. And, and then when I started making a living as an artist, I started learning a lot of stuff. And see, when you let, when you let out, you enrich yourself more. I had all this information about how to make a living as an artist and, and, and on and on and on. And I never told anyone. 
you know, I, I told some people, but never really, okay, tell you know. It to yourself. Yeah, I kept it to myself. And it wasn't until recently that people are like, dude, are you going to share, like, what you learned? I was like, oh, man, like, I, I completely miss this. You know, I, I miss this again. You have to let it go. As it comes in, you have to let it out. Now, I, I recently uh, heard Brendan Bouchard talk about this. If you, guys, if you guys haven't checked out Brendan Bouchard, go check him out. He's, he's a pretty cool, cool, pre, pretty cool dude and guru. I think he's like an online guru or something. Like that. I don't know. But he's cool. He's got some cool books out there. And he talks about this. That as you learn stuff, you need to, you need to share it with the world. Uh, it doesn't necessarily always have to come up from a, from a point of a teacher. It could just be an experience. Like, oh, look, this is what I've learned. This is how I did it. And I don't know everything, but I know this because I know I did it, right? And then you can share that. And you keep the, the, the pipe open, right? M -m more is going to come if you, leave, if you leave the pipe open. If you close the pipe, you're like, <coughs> oh, man, I got some knowledge. I'm going to keep it to myself. I got some money. I'm going to keep it to myself. And I'm not going to reinvest or, or see when you're reinvesting in your business, you're really you're really keeping the pipeline open, you know. And so that's so more comes in. I know it's a, it's a very counterintuitive to some people, but but that's what I've experienced. You got to keep it open. Keep it like a, like an empty hose. It has to be like an empty hose or like a doorway. It has to stay open. Something comes, something goes. Something comes, something goes. And anyways, I made this way too long already. I hope that you guys uh, got some value out of this art chat in my car studio. These are like cool car studio blogs. Maybe one day I'll put them in a blog or something. Not in a blog, in a... In a blog? No, 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 no. In a pod. No, in a, in a podcast. Pod. What am I thinking? In a podcast. These are like car studio podcasts. Yeah. With your host, awesome Jose Trujillo, and his cool sidekick, Daniel. Daniel Trujillo. All right, guys. My name is Jose Trujillo. I am the world's greatest living artist. Thank you so much for tuning in and, and hanging out with me. I hope you guys got some cool value. Take care. Adios, amigos.